Well, hello there, YouTube. Welcome to the first episode of the Blake's Game Room podcast. I didn't. I hope I can change the title later because I just put BGR one, which is really stupid. But anyway, yeah, I'm joined today with my co-host uh, Cody, aka Don Don Raiden. How you doing, buddy? Good, man. Thanks for having me. Awesome, awesome. I hope you guys are liking our setup here. We're doing uh, Google Hangouts, so it'll switch back and forth hopefully while we're talking. Um, if it doesn't, sorry. Uh, it's supposed to uh, and whatnot. Anyway, um, yeah. So I've been wanting to get back into doing the podcast. Uh, this will be also up on some sort of podcast website and then eventually onto iTunes um, is what we're planning on doing. So definitely stay tuned for... Um, all the links and whatnot that we're going to be having below. And, uh, yeah, so what's been up to, bro? Not much. I just want to put this out there that this is a new format for us, so uh, bear with us through any technical <laughs> difficulties because there definitely will be some difficulties here. Yes. Um, so we're, we're trying to get everything figured out here. So this first episode, it'll it'll be the rough run, but hopefully once we get a, uh, a few of these, this specific format, I should say, under our belt, we'll – We'll be good to go. Yeah, definitely, because we've never done, first of all, we've never done video. Um, I think we've done maybe one or two in the past, but we've never actually done a full-on, you know, with our names on the screen and whatnot and kind of, you know, back-and-forth video talk. Um, so definitely would be pretty cool. And really, the only time we've done it in the past was uh, an old episode of our, our old podcast, Social Nerdgasm, and, and we actually did that live during a Twitch stream that I was putting on. So it was, oh, yeah. it, it was completely unofficial. It was just kind of one of those spur of the moment <laughs> things where we were actually having yeah. a Skype conversation recording that. We were recording a normal podcast. I just happened <laughs> to be streaming it at the same time. Yeah, uh, that's, I remember that. That was, uh, that was back in the day. Way back in the day. Um, but uh, anyway, so here's a rundown, guys, of what our podcast is going to consist of. It's going to be around 45 minutes to an hour long. Um, so we're not going to be too long or too short. Um, I want to keep you guys entertained as much as I can, or as much as we can, I should say. Um, and uh, what we're going to put in is we're going to have game talk, uh, which will be game news. We'll have some kind of subject we'll talk about each week. Um, and we'll also have some kind of uh, maybe movie or tech or nerd talk in there as well. Um, maybe what games we've been playing recently um, or a cool pickup that we might have gotten. Um, so I'm going to start off the segment of um, any cool stuff, gadgets, um, games that you picked up and been playing recently, Cody? Uh, yeah, actually, I just picked up this bad boy here. And this oh, is so the, beautiful. So this beautiful. is the... Um, this is the the PS Vita Slim. This is the aqua blue color. Uh, this was the Japanese color release last year, um, and they brought this to the states as a GameStop exclusive. So here in the states, there's only been two. Co has there been three colors? Did the silver come here as well? No. Okay, mm -hmm. so in the PS, or I shouldn't say PSP, the PS Vita in the Model One, the old fat one, you had the options of the glacier white and the black. And then in the Slim, it's only been the black and then this one GameStop exclusive Aqua Blue. So I'm digging this, um, playing a game called Corpse Party, Blood Drive. It's driving me nuts. There, there's a lot of content going on in this game, a lot of dialogue. And I'll be honest with you, like I, it's drawn me into the story, but I, I have no idea what's going on whatsoever at all. Like it's just throwing up all these there, dialogue man. boxes, talking about all these different characters and stuff. And I'm, I'm just kind of lost, to be honest with you. Granted, this is a direct sequel. I needed to play the first two games. But it's, I, I don't know, man. There's just so much stuff going on. But it's its good. I'm liking it. That's good. That's good. Um, just hold, 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 hold your uh, feet up one time. I just want to talk about people. There's a couple of differences about, um, about it. Um, if you can see it down there in the bottom corner. Um, as you see, the black screen that is the only thing that's encased in glass. The whole front cover of the Vita is no longer glassed out. Um, so you're actually feeling rubber where the blue is. Um, also, on the very top of his system is where they put the light bar now. So that is where your on and off button will, uh, you'll actually see the little light come on when you turn it on and off. 
it won't be on your PS uh, home button anymore. Um, and also turning it to the back, uh, you'll see that the grip pads are slightly larger, um, so you'll have less mistakes using your touchscreen and all that way. So um, it's definitely an improvement. It's much thinner, I believe, what, 20% lighter, Cody? Yeah. And uh, it's just an overall beautiful system. I'm looking to get one of those myself. Um, I love the blue. It's a, you know, it's like a Carolina blue. Um, beautiful system. Um, I really wish they came out that color in the PSP. I mean, I would have been all over that. Uh, I tell you what, if I'm honest with you, I, I had a launch unit, um, and I gotta say, the soft touch is mm-hmm. so much nicer to hold on to. Like, I my hands get sweaty. You know, I'm a big guy, so I get hot real quick. And I don't ever feel like this thing is just going to slip out of my hand. I don't feel like I'm just going to be walking along and, and just chuck the fucker across the screen, <laughs> across the, the you know the house or whatever because sweaty hands. You know, it's just this nice soft touch, and it just it stays there. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, that's um, that's that's like that's what, that's the glass part not being there, which is uh, really nice. And yeah. I play mine with um, now mine has textured skins all the way around it. Sure. Um, Sword Art Online, and I also have a white grip, so it just adds kind of like those controller-like grips to the bottom. It doesn't add anything, you know, trigger-wise or anything like that. Yeah, I I had those on my launch unit, but I'll tell you what, I don't. It might have just been the way I play it, but specifically, like when I was playing first-person shooters like Killzone Mercenary or uh, you know Burning Skies or even Racers uh, when I was playing Asphalt and uh, Need for Speed and stuff. I don't know what it, but like just the right side of it, I would always pop that corner off. So I was constantly fiddling, trying to put it back on. Um, fighting games was the same way too. It just it never stayed on my system. Yeah, that's 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 strange. Mine was a was a Chinese or a off brand yeah. um, product because it's the only thing that came in white. Um, I got it white to match my system. Um, I don't have my system here. I'd, I'd show you um, what it looks like. Maybe we'll show it next time. Um, but so mine looks like the whole sort of online deal and whatnot. And it's sure. like, it's mine's basically a case without having a case, you know, it's, it's, it's kind of hard to explain, but, um, yeah, I, I, it's definitely heavy. Um, so that's one reason I do want to get this, the lighter model. Um, and that blue is just so. Yeah. God, I'll be honest. I, I didn't think I'd like it. Um, I, I don't have it with me. It's in the other room, but I just picked up, the new blue PS4 DualShock 4 controller. Oh. Now that blue, I love. Uh, this is about the same color as your shirt, isn't it? Yeah, it's it's pretty close to the same color. It's actually maybe a little darker. I love that blue. So when I first saw this, I was like, ah, I don't I don't know if I'm gonna care for this, but I I actually I really like it. Um, yeah, it looks good, especially in that that kind of flat matte look to it with the rubber. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So as, as far as pickups, I mean that's. That's really the only thing I got going on. Um, I've been playing a lot of games, a lot of different games. Um, on PS4. Oh, I heard on Borderlands, by the way, that it is the game of the year edition that you put on the Vita. Yeah, it is. Yeah, and you get all the um, you get the six DLC packs. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. We were talking about that the other day, and I don't think we were positive or something. We weren't. So I, I, went, I went ahead and picked that up the other day, too, since uh, PSN had it on sale for, like, four bucks. Yeah, I, I should have picked it up. I need to get that. But Excellent. it sucks. I, I bought a I bought a 16-gig memory card for it, and it's I filled it up this morning already. Just, <laughs> just, just with PlayStation Plus games. Um, somewhere in here. Yeah, I got, a, I got an 8-gigger left. Uh, this is what you need, isn't it? <laughs> before I, before I sold my launch unit, man, I had the I had the thirty two gig. But uh, oh, that's I, right. yeah, you did, didn't you? I think I'll probably just break down and buy the. They got the sixty four gigs out now, so I'll probably just buy one of those. I think I'm gonna put this one in my Vita TV. I don't think my Vita TV has anything in it. Yeah, just to put I mean, something in there. And eight gigs fine if all you're gonna do is uh, you know use it for save files. Yeah, I got these for like five bucks or something, like on some kind of clearance. Mm-hmm. And um, I was getting past it up. I thought that was a sweet deal. I can't remember what's in my. I think my Vita has a 16 gig, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, that's that's the biggest problem with the Vita is obviously the the proprietary memory cards and people's people's been 
you know, complaining about that since day one. It's, it's ridiculous, but at this point, it is what it is. The thing is, though, you don't need a huge one if you're going to be a physical collector. I mean, you only need a, a small amount of space to actually save your content. Um, where you get in trouble is with the digital downloads, which, unfortunately, mm. with the Vita, there's more releases via digital anymore than there is actual physical releases. Mm -hmm. um, the other yeah, downside is, Plus. yeah, with pay PlayStation Plus too. That's the other downfall. Again, I, I bought a 16 gig card, and I only, you know, I've only put so many of my PlayStation Plus games on it. It's already filtered up. Yeah, definitely, definitely. So. But um, yeah, so PS Vita, cool system. We'll maybe talk about it again in the future. Oh, for sure, because I'm I'm kind of addicted to it right now. It's like yeah. it's it's my go-to. Of course, I, I'm a PC gamer at heart, so I do I do the majority of my actual gaming on a PC. So the fact the fact that I got this now, it's kind of nice. And really, the whole reason I bought the the Vita again is because I got a kid due here in a few months. So I'm going to be spending a lot of time, you know, going back and forth with the nursery, having the kid attached to me, and stuff like that. Um, so me actually be able to get some quality time in front of my computer playing some games or even in front of the console for that matter you know this this is going to come in handy i can kind of go in the nursery just sit there in the rock with the baby like oh my god and then just play the shit out of this plus the remote play yeah, yeah. oh my god when i had my launch unit man i i never never used remote play before i sold it then i sold my launch ps4 and i was like okay i don't have the ps4 anymore so i don't need the vita sold my vita a month later, I bought another another PS4. <laughs> so, I I really wanted to try this remote play, and uh, it's awesome. Maybe. I've I've got Sword Art Online right now streaming from my PS4 onto this right now, and it's just it's perfect. Yeah, I, I mean, I, I told you uh, at work, I used to I used to be in the jewelry business, and we'd be very very slow in the. Uh, you know, after Christmas and between Christmas and Valentine's Day and in the summer especially. And I tell you what, pulling that bad boy out, <laughs> sitting over in the office, playing Destiny, getting paid. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> it was perfect. I was playing Destiny Online, working people, and I'm sitting here on a remote play and my PS4 is, you know, a 15, 20-minute car drive that way in some other house, you know. I mean, yeah. it's absolutely amazing. And even, uh, you know, I'm a huge Elder Scrolls fan. And Elder Scrolls Online on there is just absolutely perfect. Yeah, I, I, still, need, I still need to try that. Um, yeah. I actually I haven't tried a whole lot yet. Um, I've tried Borderlands. It worked pretty well. Uh, I played, um, obviously, Sword Art. Also, to get well. around your, um, you know, they've taken away a lot of apps that you had. On the on the Vita, for example, the Twitter, the Facebook, the Netflix, the Crackle, the whatever. Uh, with your remote play, hey, you get access to the WWE Network. You get your Hulu, your Netflix from your PS4. You know, it's it's an amazing. I mean, you're streaming to stream somewhere else. It's a it's an amazing service. You know, watch your Twitch streams on your Vita. Um, it's a it's a very neat service. Now, I haven't tried. Twitch streaming on the Vita. I don't know if that works, but I haven't tried that yet. I don't think it would, but uh, something to think about down the road. Well, I mean, I, I guess technically you could, but you would just be streaming your, your PS4 collection, not your actual Vita games. Oh, well, yeah, yeah, but I'm saying, like, you could be on the crapper, let's oh. say, or, or you could be outside on your porch, Let's say smoking a cigarette. Let's say you're a smoker, and you want to stream Twitch while you're out there smoking a nice cigar or whatever. I don't know if you, they they would actually allow you to stream Twitch on the Vita or not. I don't I don't know. Well, yeah, I mean you should be able to because it's literally it's they there's no way for them to differentiate that you're on your PS4 or your Vita. Very true. So, very true. Because so. you're because you're actually just using it as a remote, so. Yeah, because you're you're still streaming it from the PS4. It just it's showing up on your screen. Yeah, probably take a pretty heavy hit to your bandwidth. But oh yeah, yeah, and that's another thing too. I don't know when when you streamed it from work, <laughs> um, was your PS4 hooked up over Wi-Fi or was it hardlined in? It's always Wi-Fi. Gotcha. Um, everything I've read online said that you you really should hardline your PS4 in because you get so much 
such a cleaner connection with it. I haven't done that yet, so I need to. I still need to go buy another Cat5 cable and hook it up. I mean, it all depends. We are a local business, so you know, there's only one computer uh, on Wi-Fi, and then um, you know, just everybody's phones. Yeah. And where uh, I had you know just that, and so. Um, I'll, I'll, I'll try it out next month. We're going to go down to Kentucky to uh, to have a little pre-baby vacation. So <laughs> I'm gonna. I, I I'm assuming there's Wi-Fi in our uh, cabin. There may not be, but if there is, I'm gonna give it a try. So we'll see if how not, that goes. if not, you just need to leave and be like, listen, I'm a technological being. I can't do without my Wi-Fi. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! Hey, see if you can tether it to your 4G. I could do that. Actually, I can't do that. We we lowered our data plans. I've been I've been trying to rock the less than two gigs a month deal. Uh, yeah, it's hard. It's hard. It's really hard. It's really Tell hard. Tell me about it. Tell me about it. That's been my struggle. I'm a data whore, man. I am too. But uh, yeah, so uh, basically, I've been um, uh, playing more PC stuff with you. You've got me on the Borderlands too. Yeah, um, that's really fun. Uh, then we've been playing uh, some other odds and ends on there too. Team Fortress and Call of Duty. Call of Duty Four. Yeah. Yep. Uh, this games. Oh my god. Me, me, and my buddy uh, Jacob, we actually started short tankered on there. Uh, we started the whole playthrough with Borderlands Two, and we've we've beat the main campaign. I've beat two of the DLC packs. Uh, my goal for it is I want to go through and get all the achievements. I want to I want a hundred percent that game. Yeah, that'd be a. Uh, that's not. I mean, is it that hard? I mean, is it? No, it's just it's time consuming with all the with all the DLCs, all the stuff. DLCs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah, and all the loot that you got to grab and yep, whatnot. Um, so. Well, things in my area have been looking up recently. Uh, I finally got a. Uh, I finally went to that video game bar. Um, been there a couple times. The place is awesome. It's called Games on Tap. Um, great place. It's free video games. Why, uh, why don't you go a little bit more into that too? Because this isn't this isn't a typical barcade. Because really, you know, most people when they think of barcades anymore, you know, your your Dave and Buster's and such, where you have a few arcade games, but you also have a lot of, you know, you have a lot of your ticket machines. This this is completely different from that, right? Uh yeah. Um, it's, uh, basically, it, it's a small place. It's in a, uh, it's in actually a shopping plaza. It's at the end of a shopping plaza. And, uh, what it is, is you walk in and it is a bar, you know, all the way around. Then they have a couch and another TV at the very end. They have a bathroom in the back left corner and it's very narrow. It's not very wide. They have tables on the side here, um, uh, um behind the bar. Where uh, you know you can sit down, and if you, you know, I mean, you can bring your own food and eat there if you want. I mean, me and my buddy Dallas, we brought twenty dollars of Chinese food the other day. We were in there drinking beers, eating Chinese food, and playing video games. You know, right. and uh, you know they don't care, and it's uh, it's really awesome. Um, as long as you're buying beer, they don't care what you do. You know, they don't care how long you're there, whatever. Just keep buying beer. Beer is only seven bucks a pitcher. It's cheap. It's cold. It's I mean it's name brand. Um, they have tons of bottled exports and imports too. Um, well, basically they have what looks like a D and D table in the back corner. Um, so it looks like they can do some kind of like uh, card games or, or Dungeons and Dragons like stuff. Um, they're also uh, set up. Uh, so where on the couch side, where I told you they had a TV, that's more of the Wii U Smash area. Um, and then while sitting at the bar, there's like four TVs, which have two Xbox Ones, uh, a Steam machine, and an Xbox 360 hooked up to them. And then there's another screen over on the edge of the bar that has a Raspberry Pi hooked up to it that has pretty much any retro game you can think of playing is on the system, um, and cool. you can play it full controller. And don't even have to touch the keyboard. Um, nice. It's really sweet. And uh, 
what, what kind of controller do they have set up with it? Um, to be honest, I don't know. I didn't see it. Gotcha. Um, he was just telling me about it because nobody was playing it at the moment. Um, he was just giving me the – he had just got it set up like the day before. Um, and they actually even Twitch streamed it. So uh-huh. <laughs> that was pretty cool. Um, you can stream from the bar. You can do Twitch. Uh, you can do whatever you want, uh, basically. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a really friendly atmosphere. There's not a ton of people there at any given time um, unless they're having events, but they have events like every other day. So um, I think they do – they have anime nights every Thursday, uh, which I missed tonight's because I had some stuff come up. Um, but they had that, and uh, I think they have um, – Usually on the weekends, I'll have a fighting game tournament and yeah. whatnot. Um, but it's a great bar. Um, I'm glad to have it in my town. Uh, the closest thing we have to it is uh, some place in Orlando, I think, called Level Up Bar or something like that. And uh, it's kind of similar, but I think they charge you to play the games. Um, like, technically, I could see if even if he wanted to charge to play the games, it would be more like a pool room. You know, you charge like what five bucks an hour to play on a pool table, sure, or something like that. You know, um, even if he did that, it'd, it'd still be relatively cheap. You know, for for the experience that you get there, because yeah. um, I mean they've got tons of games, Steam games, you know, what have you. It's just unreal. But uh, also in the, in my town, uh, we got a retro game store again that just opened up this month. Um, the bar's been around for about five to six months, I believe, maybe longer. Um, but the retro game store has just been around since February here. And uh, really, really uh, cool people in there and uh, real helpful. They'll actually look, if you tell them for a game you're looking for, they'll actually keep their eye out on it and try to get it for you. Um, or if you're looking for anything in particular, you know, they'll try to get it for you. Right. Um, so that's that's really cool. Um, once I get my list and all, my phone broke, I told you about. Um, so, uh, I'm I'm sure I have a couple of them. I could probably sell you. <laughs> probably. Uh, hey, we need to talk about that after this podcast. Um, but we've had uh, some uh, stuff. Uh, so I was putting my stuff into my phone, my uh, collecting data, and so that's going to be on hold for a little bit. I might have to get my tablet out to continue doing that. And uh, so I was just looking for stuff here and there. But they have everything in there from comic books to they have arcade machines you can play, but they charge you 50 cents a play or whatever. Gotcha. Um, but they have figures, the pop figures, uh, all kinds of stuff. And uh, it's a really cool place. It's called the Arcade 80s. Um, so, you know, if you're in Polk County area, it's looking good for uh, for us nerds. We've got actually stuff being opened and not closed down. So i um, really excited for that. That's and, cool. Uh, when, when I was younger in uh, college, like right, right before I, me and my wife got married, you know, one of my goals was to open up my own video game store. And yeah. I, I really want to do that. What I my plan was, I was going to have like, I was going to have a Neo Geo MPS system. I was going to have a couple different arcades. I was going to have some stations set up uh, with Xboxes, Playstations, stuff like that. And then I was going to do a deal like every other weekend or whatever, have like a, a weekend tournament where people can come in. You know, they can. I'd even do it for free. You know, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and they just come in, hang out, and kind of be like a safe place for kids and stuff to come, and you know, just have a good outlet for them. But. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, I mean, that's something that, you know, I, I'd even like to see him build on it. Um, I was telling him, uh, you know, even open up more of them uh, down the road because it's such, or at least open up a bigger place yeah. um, that, you know, could be a little more kid friendly, you know, um, you know, with maybe getting a soda machine. Or something like that, you know, where it'd be a little more kid friendly, where you know the the teenage crowd could come hang out, um, you know, to you know increase your 
your base, of course. But uh, yeah, definitely, it's two cool places that I've that I've uh, experienced recently, and really, really glad to experience them. Um, and uh, definitely be back to him again. I mean, I've already spent, uh, I've already bought over ten games from the retro store, uh, which y'all see in a pickup video here pretty soon, probably later this week. And uh, I've bought so many pop figures you guys are going to be like oh my god why is he unboxing all these pop figures you know but uh yeah so uh anyway uh i think we will uh be taking a break right hey guys blake here and i'm going to tell you guys about a cool place that's in my local part of my town um it is called games on tap and what this place is, it's a video game bar, um, not like Dave & Buster's or any of those other places that you might have seen on TV or had local in your area, um, but this place is just a really cool, chill bar that you can go hang out with, has tons of TVs, tons of other cool stuff, and uh, basically you get to go hang out, drink beer, wine, whatever snacks they have on the day, and uh, you know just play a bunch of uh, cool video games. From the Xbox One to the Wii U to Steam to any retro games, they have it all. Um, so they also have Magic the Gathering nights, anime nights, tons of different kinds of parties. And uh, they're located on 1622 6th Street Southeast. That is right here in lovely Winter Haven, Florida. Um, so if you want to check them out, check them out on uh, Facebook. Um, so definitely I'm there a lot, so come see me and uh, you know we'll have a couple beers together. That's Games on Tap right here in Winter Haven. Moving right along, everybody, into gaming news. Um, as everybody knows, if you've watched the Super Bowl, uh, Pokemon put out an ad for their 20th anniversary. Um, what do you think about that Super Bowl ad, Cody? Did you ever watch it? Of course I watched it. I've, I've watched it a few times. <laughs> I actually, showed, I showed it to my wife um, this week. I uh, showed it to her, and, the, you know, obviously – the very ending of it, you know, you got the, the kid, his eyes are getting all big and the dad's like, yeah. you can do that. Yeah. And <laughs> my wife, my wife was like, it's, that's totally going to be you. And I was like, yep. yeah, yeah. <laughs> go catch some Pokemon. Like, 20 years, man. I was, I was eight years old when this, when this franchise came out and you know, it's, it's been with me ever since now. Granted, I, I have not played most of them. I haven't played any of the ones that was on the, the Game Boy. I played a couple on the DS and 3DS. But, you know, obviously I harken back to the good old blue and red days. Um, so, and I actually got more into, like, the, the tradable card game and stuff like that, which I'm still into to this day. I, I still love the TCG. Uh, it's just it's TCG fun. Online is great, man. I love it, it is. It is. And I've actually bought quite a few starter decks. And I taught my wife how to play. So every once in a blue moon, she'll be like, "Hey, you want to play? You want to play some uh, Pokemon?" And I'm like, I'm like hell yeah! <laughs> so it's better than playing Pokemon's. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, the commercial. I thought the the beginning of the commercial was kind of lackluster. Uh, I really liked it when the guy from looked like from Japan, you know, kind of got there, and and you know, then they, he entered the arena, and it was like you know the finals or whatever, and he's going against the football player, you know, that was really cool. Um, and they were showing all the Pokemon they had out. I thought that was pretty neat. Yeah. Um, and then, of course, the ending was the best part, you know, with the, you know, let's make it another 20 years, you know, with Pokemon because, you know, I, 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 didn't, I didn't get the whole, the whole basically the whole first half of it, you know. I the, didn't either. The girl playing chess and all that the shit. The person was, running and, and but now, yeah. now the, 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 where it made sense was when the guys, the football players hit the wall. Because it, it was one of the lyrics from the from the show, I forget exactly what lyric it was, but it was like um, to be the best or something like that. Yeah, and that's what they hit on the wall when they went out, um, and then that's when it kind of took it into Pokemon. Um, but the whole "I can do this," I didn't get that at the beginning either. But it's whatever. Um, anyway. Uh, as I sent you a couple links to uh, some of the systems coming out, uh, yeah. I personally am getting the 3DS XL. It's the new, I'm sorry. Oop, shouldn't have said that. So new 3DS, no XL. No XL. No XL. <laughs> um, so basically it's going to be, we're finally getting the chance to use faceplates um, because I don't believe... 
I don't know if this is the first time we're getting an actual new 3DS without the XL. Or I don't know if they've already come out with a system before that didn't have the XL. But um, you're actually going to get two sets of faceplates with this. One of them's going to be the Pokemon Red faceplates, and one's going to be the Pokemon Blue faceplates. So it's going to be really cool. I'm going to be rocking the red. Um, and I hope, I hope Nintendo, please come out with a set of yellow faceplates that you can buy separately because that would be legit. Well, I mean, keep in mind, faceplates have been around for quite a while. So I'm sure there's probably, there's probably hundreds of them that you can pick up either, you know, from Japan or wherever to where you can, there's, there's probably already some yellow ones out there for like a yellow Pikachu or something like that. Yeah. Yeah, I was just hoping on there um, because the only way to get faceplates right now, by the looks of it, is from Nintendo's shop dot com or whatever. And uh, the wood one looks pretty sexy too. The wood faceplates kind of kind of cool, but um, yeah. So I'm actually excited to get the system because I do understand what some people say, and I've noticed it. I love my XL. Because I have bigger hands, of course. I like the bigger screen. Yeah. And whatnot. But you do notice in some games, <coughs> there's a little blurriness. You know, there's a little... It's stretched out a little bit. Sure. I mean, because all, all they did was literally just... They didn't bump up the resolution or anything. They just increased the screen size. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. So um, that's why I'm kind of excited to see how maybe the new Pokemon Omega Sapphire um, and I'm sorry, Alpha Sapphire and Omega Ruby are going to look on this smaller screen size, um, how crisper it's going to be. Um, <coughs> so I'm, uh, I'm excited to find that out. Only bad thing is it's $200, but I mean, so I, so I want to pick up another 3DS. I, you know, obviously the new 3DS, <laughs> yeah. but you know, I'm coming from coming from a launch um, 3DS unit and then selling it and upgrading to the original 3DS XL that came out. There's no way I can go back to a smaller 3DS. There's no way in hell. I, I remember being so cramped. You know, I could I could sit there and play the launch unit for maybe 20 minutes before I, I would just have to put it down because my, my hands are cramping up on me. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, obviously, they have a 3DS XL, a new one that comes in the XL, but it would have been nice to add one of these Pokemon versions of it. Yeah, I'm, so, I'm really surprised they didn't um, they didn't it, it didn't come out with a red and a blue, you know, XL, you know, and have the two of them. Would have been, uh, would have been an easy sell. Yeah, I mean, you would have had people, they both would have sold out because yeah. collectors would have had to have both of them. And then, you know, I would have just got the red one. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, it, but what's cool is doing it this way. However, you do get both games. Um, and I get to experience these things called a, these face plates and whatnot. <laughs> so that's a whole other, you know, waste of money I can digest into the system. Um yeah, just but, for your knowledge, I mean, you can just hop on eBay and put in 3DS faceplates, and there's God, there's a thousand different ones on there. Oh yeah, yeah. So, I mean that that will definitely be a cool. I mean, it, they're they're pricey, you know. They're like twenty eight to thirty bucks. Yeah, so yeah. it's, it's kind of ridiculous in my opinion. It's it's just like the whole amiibo craze. But, yeah. Very true. Very true. But um, anyway, and then what I'm very sad about is, okay, here's a here's an official uh, faceplate Pikachu number fifty seven, and it's a Japanese import, but it's thirty six dollars. You know, it's got a bunch of Pikachu's on it that you can put on your yeah. new three DS. But uh, yeah, um, what I brought out to show. Is I think y'all remember me getting this a while back. If you've been in with the channel, uh, back when Alpha Sapphire came out, uh, I got the uh, Nintendo 2DS. Now I haven't. Uh, the only reason I have opened this 
<coughs> was to take the charger out because I, I needed another charger um, because I couldn't find a charger. Uh, but, oh, uh, excuse it. me. I know. God damn. Um, I don't know where that came from. But uh, this was to commemorate, you know, the Alpha Sapphire. It's see-through blue. Uh, they also came out with a red one, see-through. Um, however, it seems Europe and I believe Japan is getting these. Um, but the only change it seems that they're really doing is I believe they took the face buttons here and they didn't they make them like the Super Nintendo colors, Cody, or something like that. Uh, Famicom, yeah. Yeah. And um, yeah, it's, it's the blue, green, yellow, and red. Yeah. Well, I guess that's the that's the for the Pokemon games, I guess. Um, because that's your four beginning Pokemon games. Um, so Japan gets the blue one, the red one, the green one, and the yellow one. Uh, where the European region is getting the yellow, the blue, and the red. They're not getting the green one because they didn't get the green one. Um, but uh, the green one really looks good. Um, but my the one I want is the yellow one. Um, I think the yellow one looks really, really good. And Pokemon uh, Yellow is my favorite uh, uh, of, of the four. So, but um, I thought it's kind of weird, though, that they're redoing these for the Pokemon. Um, I guess that's why we didn't get them over here, because they already did it with the Alpha Sapphire. But, uh, yeah, it's kind of different. And... Uh, so moving on from that, they are also giving out free stuff every month. Um, just a little kicker here for my Instagram. If you follow me on Instagram, it's Blake's Game Room. I gave out five of these new codes. If I can get some more before the end of the month, I will be doing another giveaway contest where you can win one of these new codes. Um, so follow me on Instagram, and you'll be uh, looking there uh, for any updates. Um Next up, Cody, what I want to talk about was this week Street Fighter V came out. And you were telling me about uh, how much of a flop this was. Yes, it did. So, well, I don't know if it was necessarily a flop or here's the gist of it. So Capcom announced months ago, right, what their intent was with the release of this game. So if you don't know... This game released um, just this past weekend, but it is not a full game. And it was intentionally meant to be that way. So typically, in all previous Street Fighter releases, you got the full game. You got you got online multiplayer, you got a campaign, um, single player, you got all that jazz. This, you did not get this. When this came out, you literally had online multiplayer, um, which the servers were janky. That's to be expected with all new games. Um, people are hopping on and they just abuse the shit out of these servers. I'm not saying it's right. I'm not saying it's wrong. That's just how it is. It doesn't matter what game you, you go. If it's a huge hyped up AAA title, more than likely day one, you're going to have launch issues with the servers. And that's exactly what happened here. But what people are pissed off about, they're saying, Oh, this is not a finished game. It's completely broken. There's no single player. There's, there's no nothing. There's no campaign. It's just online multiplayer. Well, yes, that, that's a problem, <laughs> but but this was known. The problem we're, we're going to run into here is if you didn't know anything about this game, if you hadn't been following Capcom, if you hadn't been following Street Fighter V, um, the Capcom Unity blog or anything like that for this, then you weren't going to know. You're going to go out and you're going to spend 60 bucks on this game. And you're going to get home and you're going to be like, what the hell? Mm -hmm. You know, what's going on here? So, but they, they did release a, uh, uh, a content release update schedule for this. Um, we are going to get all the stuff. You're going to get the story campaign and all that, but it's not coming until June. So yeah. <laughs> they, they, they actually, the original release was set for March, but they, they bumped it up um, to last weekend because there's an upcoming tournament 
and they wanted to get the game into the hands of all these people who plan on competing in the tournament. That way they could start playing with the characters and playing online. So really, in that aspect, that's kind of cool that they were able to do that. I mean, yeah, did they release a, a beta product or some people are calling it an alpha product? Yeah, it, it did. It's not, a, it's not a complete finished game. But the people who knew about Street Fighter V knew that going into it. And the people who really care about Street Fighter V play multiplayer only. That's that's what they buy it for. They buy it for the competitive scene. That's that's what it's all about to the actual core Street Fighter V fan base. Mm-hmm. Um, your average Joe coming off the street, yeah, they're probably not going to care about the competitive scene. So they want the single player and all that stuff. That way, when they hop online and get wrecked, you know, they're they can hop off being all pissed and still play the, the single player. Mm-hmm. Yep. Right now, right now they can't do that. So. There's a full timeline. Um, they're not. They're supposedly not going to do DLCs in the former fashion of having like Super X Alpha Street Fighter Five Story Edition um, <laughs> Ultra Mega Remix type deal. If there, it's also supposed to be continued um, content that they're going to add in. The one thing I don't like though is that they're already talking about the season pass, which is like thirty bucks, and like each month they're going to add one new character. Um, so not not really excited about that because I think there's only sixteen characters at launch. Yeah, it looks like uh, which which is ridiculous considering how many characters they actually yeah, have in that at launch. And then the six new characters: Alex, Guile, Ibuki, Balrog, Jural, and Urien will be added to the title, bringing the total. Uh, roster up. And I, well, why, why is it new characters? Guile's not new. Balrog's not new. Yeah. You know, I don't see. That's, that's, I don't understand that. Why they're charging you for older characters that have been in the series before. And the fact that they're charging you $5 a character plus they're still making you pay for the premium costumes or only discounting the price. Yeah. That's kind of that's kind of bullshitty, um, and you get a free theme. Whoop de do, you know? Yeah. A theme costs like ninety nine cents. So yeah. I mean, I, that's it's. <laughs> I'm not too excited for it from Capcom. Um, my buddy Rick was up at the game bar, uh, games on tap on launch, playing it on Steam, and he said that the PC version anyway wasn't having as much problem. I guess as the console version. Actually, um, actually, it's the opposite. The PC version's much more of a hot mess than the console version. From what he was telling me, he was uh, 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 his, he was he was playing great um, online, from what it sounded like, and uh, they were doing a bunch of local um, tournaments on it as well. So, or like local matches. Yeah. So I guess your local stuff works great. It's uh, you... well. So, so some of the issues they had with the PC version is, um, and, and just to be so people know, this is a this is a console exclusive on the PS4, and then obviously the PC release, um, and there's actual crossplay. So PS4 users can play with PC users. Oh so really? That, I didn't know that, that. That's first, that's that's a cool feature. Um, however, there's some issues. Some of the main issues with the PC version was um, there was a resolution switching bug in it, which is really bad because it's just, it's time consuming and it's annoying. So, say the game starts off at like 480p, right? All right. In, in the resolution settings. Well, I want to play at 1080p or I want to play at 1440p. In order to do that, most games you literally just scroll through a list, click your resolution, and click done. This one, you have to cycle through every in between resolution to get to your choice of resolution. So you got to go 720, 1080, 1440. Oh my God. Not just that, all the other increments in between. There's on the oh, PC, on I the, 8 by 1200. On, on the PC <laughs> side, there, there's, a, there's a vast uh, list of different resolution yeah. increments you can go through. Oh wow! All the way uh, to get all the way up to nineteen twenty. Yeah, wow. yeah. Uh, another problem is is native direct input support. So right now, um, 
<laughs> this this is kind of crazy considering that on the console this is a ps4 exclusive but right now the pc version does not accept ps3 or ps4 compatible arcade sticks only <laughs> xbox compatible arts arcade sticks work on it so it, i i find that really amusing considering the fact that it is a piece uh, ps4 exclusive and sony paid a lot of money for that and then on the <laughs> on the pc side their their controllers don't even work with the damn thing right now. That's pretty. That's that's janky. <laughs> it's very janky. But um, anybody that's remotely interested in it, check out the uh, the Capcom Unity blog for it. Um, they oh made also 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 just found this out. They haven't put a patch in for it yet. If you have a winning streak online, and you don't want to lose that winning streak, you can just back out of the game <laughs> and they won't penalize you for it so well uh, and right before you, you said that that's why i wanted to, to hark on go to the capcom unity blog because they've had a couple of up updates um in the last day or so they've they fixed a major they at least they say they have they fixed a majority of the issues that was going on uh did they yeah yeah because i heard a lot of people were getting pissed off about that you know they're sitting there winning and all of a sudden just nobody yeah and uh, also, I heard also a lot of uh, the peripherals for this game were delayed as well, which pissed off a lot of people. Yeah. Um, I guess a lot of people were planning on getting a brand new PS4 fight stick with this game, and that was delayed or something for some reason. It just seems like Capcom really tried rushing this out the door way too quickly and didn't put enough time into it. Um or something happened somewhere. Somebody well, dropped the ball. <laughs> well, keep in mind this game was this game was released a month early, just for this tournament purpose. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Some they should have been more prepared, though. I mean, I mean, how can you not even have your fight sticks ready to go? <laughs> you know, you should have them in production a month ahead of time. Well, they. I mean, they they don't have anything to do with the fight stick production itself. That's the company's making the sticks. Hmm. Not, not to mention, I don't know who's making the tournament edition sticks. I don't know if it's Mad Cats again or what, or if it's just Hori. Uh, Mad Cats is having a lot of financial issues right now. They're they were talking about going through bankruptcy, so no, there, there's no telling what was going on. Well, yeah, you know, they, I think they they were either in, I think it was Rock Band, the newest Rock Band that they were part of. They made the instruments for, and mm -hmm. that game basically flopped. Um, for what they were expecting to get out of it, so yeah, they, does Guitar Hero work successful in that? I don't think it was. No, oh, okay, no, uh, well, anyway, um, yeah, so I mean, were you planning on getting Street Fighter 5 at the beginning? No, you gotta wait till the DLC and all that comes out. I'll wait till it comes on Steam for 10 bucks. <laughs> You know there's going to be an arcade edition. <laughs> that's uh, that's the beauty of being a, a PC gamer. You know, games like that. Uh, I can get on there right now by Ultimate Street Fighter 4 for $20. And it's it's complete. It's got all the DLC. it got all the extra characters. And it's going to work just fine. Yeah, that's true. And it's going to play. I mean, I didn't watch anybody play it. But I kind of wanted to play it. But I don't want to. You know what? Here, here, I'm a, I'm a, so when I play my fighters... I'm not a big competitive guy, so I like my fighters. I like, you know, my Guilty Gears and my um, my Dead or Alive. And I'm not really big on playing online because um, I just I just don't feel I'm that, that good of a player. So I have no business being online playing unless I'm playing against a friend or something. So here's my problem. I love Street Fighter. I've always been a huge fighting game fan, and uh, I'm just an average player. I'm not. I'm not terrific by any means. Or I'm not. Yeah. I'm not the worst player. I'm not the best player. I'm average. Yeah. But but I'm very competitive at the same time, <laughs> um, which means I spend the most majority of my time playing online, pissed off. <laughs> and I, there you go. I'm, I'm at a point in my life now, you know. Eight years ago, when Street Fighter Four released, I, I remember the day I picked it up, went home, and I was I was throwing shit. I'm at a point in my life now 
that. I, I can't really do that. You know, I got a kid uh, coming. I've got to kind of be more relaxed, chill, be the chill old man. And uh, I, I just know if I play that game, I, it's just going to piss me off. And I just I don't want to deal with that. That's like Call of Duty Four. <laughs> I don't I don't want to deal with that. Uh yeah. So I'm I mean, not going to I'm not going to spend sixty bucks on it. I'll wait to you know a deep sell on Steam and. Well yeah, yeah. and I, I mean I'm really glad I wasn't buying it because to be honest I really like that figure that came out with it, and um, I was actually thinking about getting it because I, I I love the Street Fighter statues, and, sure. and I love Ryu. He's a great character. He's one of my favorites, yeah. and um. Uh, I was gonna get the clear resistance, and uh, and I'm just I, I had stuff come up, never pre-ordered it, and then I heard from you there's no story mode, and I'm like, well, that's what I play <laughs> is the story mode, like because I always get my ass kicked online, so I don't play online. I always play the story mode where I can win, yeah. and uh, you know, so um, I don't know. I just hope I hope they don't do it again. I hope no fighting game company does that again because I think that's kind of ignorant. I know you want to get it out there for a fighting game tournament, but wait till next year. Wait till the next one. Well, I, would so, rather, I would rather them have a pure product out first than try to make a stupid tournament. That's we'll see. No, I mean, that, that's the, that was the plan the entire time. Even on the original March release date, it wasn't going to ship with – a campaign. Well, that's what I'm saying. That's stupid. Th this is going to be supposedly what they're saying is there. There's not going to be another edition of Street Fighter Five. You buy Street Fighter Five. All the updates in the future are going to come over a, a time period, but you're going to have it for free. Uh -huh. So there's not going to be five iterations of Street Fighter Five. You'll get updated content throughout the year. Throughout the years, oh, but yeah, it's, all, like it's all going to be season passes. It's all going to be free. It looks like the season passes are literally just going to be for extra characters. Yeah. So I don't know. I'm not happy about it, but no, I mean I, I don't think it's I don't think it's a good path. I mean, at that point, you might as well throw out a free to play game. You know, like Killer Instinct. Killer Instinct had a. I mean that that was a good system for it. free to play game. You buy your characters as you want. You can buy the the passes, the packs for the actual characters, and it worked out well. So mm -hmm. I think that would have been a much better route than charging people sixty to a hundred dollars for this game and getting less content than what you get with fucking Killer Instinct. Yeah, definitely, definitely. Well, I already charged them, like I said, five dollars a character. So I mean, basically, you know, you're paying. So if they let's say let's say they have two years worth of characters. Okay, so that's 12 characters, two season passes. That's as much as you just paid for the game for 16 characters. And you're having to pay another $60 for 12 characters. You know, I mean, this is this is nothing new. It's street, not. It's the, street, not. the Street Fighter series has and always will be a cash cow. I mean, look at even Nintendo now. They're with, um, I mean, I, I think they get... What around three dollars per Smash character, somewhere around there. Oh, I don't even know. I didn't even know you can download extra characters in that game. Oh yeah, there's like six or ten of them. There's Mew and Ryu. Yeah, they put Ryu in Smash. They got Ryu. They just released Bayonetta for it. Dude, I played it at the game bar. Yeah. Bayonetta is so good, dude. I'm oh. just, I'm just not a Smash guy, man. I don't. I just I I can't get the the mechanics down. It's combo crazy, bro. <laughs> Shooting guns everywhere. It's crazy. Yeah, I just but, I just uh, can't get it. Yeah. Um, all right. Well, anyway, for our last story uh, tonight, uh, and we will um, get this podcast wrapped up. Is uh, if anybody watches the UFC, uh, flyweight heavyweight champion or no flyweight. Champion, not heavyweight. He's not heavyweight. He's a flyweight. Um, Demetrius Mighty Mouse Johnson said he wants to be a full-time Xbox streamer. What's your take on that? I, I mean, I, I hope the dude's financially set. <laughs> I mean, that's, well, that's well I mean, he's say. been the champion ever since it, the the belt was released. He's never lost it. That doesn't mean anything, dude. You know, you know how many champs blow their money. 
Oh well, he, he's he's a pretty good guy. He hasn't. Uh, you know he him personally. You know how he is financially. No, but I watched his behind the scenes before his fights. Boats and hoes, bro. Boats and hoes. He's married. That shit. Are you are you kidding me? <laughs> like like that means anything anymore. <laughs> bro, don't run the man down. He's actually a pretty nice guy. He does a lot of stuff with the kid, so No, that's but, cool and all. I'm just I'm just saying, I mean, you, you could be nice to the public, but I, I'm just saying I hope he's financially set because to give up a career doing something like that, well, I mean, which is a career he's not gonna be able to do forever anyhow. So it's no. good that he's he's already looking at the next step. Um but full time streaming is such an oversaturated field nowadays. It really is. Now, granted, I, I don't know anything about this guy, but you say he's sponsored by Xbox. Yeah, that's his main sponsor. So hopefully, hopefully he's already got a, a good amount of following. Um, you know, not not everybody who follows this guy is going to be a gamer or care about gaming, um, or even if they do, that doesn't mean they're going to care about streaming. But hopefully he'll have a good amount of those people that do care about streaming and will watch and support him. Um, plus being able to obviously garner more people to follow and stuff like that. It's all going to be dependent on what he plays, what he specializes in and how he is with the audience. You, you got to interact. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm reading, uh, I'm, I'm reading what he talked about here. And, uh, he uh he despite he trains six to eight hours a day, six days a week for um, MMA, and right now he's streaming roughly fifteen hours per week, and uh, so that's that's pretty strong. I mean, he technically has one day off, and I'm sure he streams probably for at least five hours on that day off. That's uh, D- that's does pretty he- crazy. Did he post his channel or anything like that? Um, you know, I don't know. Uh, yeah, Mighty Mouse UFC 125. He's got On Twitch twenty two thousand followers. Yeah. Oh, he's even playing Street Fighter Five. Two nice. hours ago, he was streaming playing it. That's pretty funny. So, yeah, I mean, he, he's going to have a, a decent following just to start off. Um, but, again, you know, it's when it comes to streaming, you got a 22,000, man. That's that's really not enough to, to make a living, especially at the uh, income that he's he's currently used to. Yeah. So, but you know he's he's got a bit of a celebrity status behind him, so you know he can always uh, he can always get extra affiliates and sponsors. You know, who knows when the next UFC game comes out? You know, get UFC a sponsor, and he'll be a full time UFC streamer or what have you. Yeah, definitely. So, I like how on his videos it's just UFC champ does this, UFC champ does that, <laughs> UFC champ <laughs> champ streaming. <laughs> That's kind of funny though. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, yeah, it says that, um, he discovered Twitch by, uh, he had his, he had his kid, uh, two and a half years ago and, uh, he heard about these people playing, watching people play video games and he was like, what is this about? You know? And so he'd be sitting there rocking his kid to sleep at night with some headphones on watching people play, you know, street fighter and call of duty and whatnot, basically what you're going to be doing. So, yep. But uh, is that something you being so, uh, you're retired? I guess that's what I'm gonna call you because sure. you did. Is that something you could see yourself doing? Uh, you know, maybe at one point in time, not not with a kid on the way. Now it's just gonna it's gonna take up too much time. I mean, I mean, maybe let's say. Let's say two, three years down the road. No, you know I don't think so. I here, here's the problem to be to be successful at it and actually call it a career. Like if it was just a, a casual hobby, you know, sure, what, whatever. But if if I wanted to make an actual job out of it, you know, I I really I'd need to dedicate myself eight to ten hours a day to it. Um, 
I can't do that. I I love video games. It's been with me my entire life, but mm -hmm. I would get so damn bored playing video games for 10 hours a day, you know, trying to interact with chat, you know, and, you know, there's good people out there. There's ass hats you got to deal with. <laughs> and, you know, I, I couldn't do that for, you know, five days a week, 10 hours a day, 50 hours a week. It's I could, you know, I yeah. physically could, but I wouldn't want to. I, I'm an outdoors guy, dude. In the summertime, if it's if it's 50 degrees, I'm outside in shorts. I'm I'm getting the kayak out. I'm going hiking. I'm walking dogs. You know what have you? Any chance I get, I'm outside. So, my my personal lifestyle does not dictate me being able to stream full time. Yeah. So you know, it's I've obviously thought about it multiple times. And, uh, you know, the backdrop with me is that my wife's schedule is so hectic. She, she runs a different shift every day. So that doesn't allow me to have a set schedule, especially when the kid comes. You know, I got to be able to whenever, you know, she works an overnight, like this weekend, Saturday and Sunday, she's working an overnight both nights. So during the day, I need to be quiet or get out of the house. That way she can sleep all day in order to go to her next <laughs> shift. Yeah, I can't be in here running my mouth streaming while she's in the next oh, room. God, damn, brother, look out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Definitely. So, no, it, it really won't work for me. As much as you know, I I think I would like it. I deep down, I know I wouldn't. Yeah, you know, I know you've always talked about it. So, so yeah. throw throw that that question your way. You know, um, yeah. If we weren't pregnant, I think it, it's something that I would I would at least try. Well, should have put a helmet on that soldier. <laughs> yeah. We're we're getting old, brother. We we don't have much time left to, to oh, make these babies. Oh shit, dude! Goddamn, my parents were. Let's see, thirty-five when they had me. Yeah, well, we're not we're not too far from there, my friend. Hey, that's seven years down the road, pal. Chill out. Seven years. It's five years for us. I oh, you said you were 28. No, I'm 29. Wife's 30. She's older than you? Yeah. Why are we talking about this on stream? All right. Any <laughs> <laughs> anyway, um, uh, so that's been the shenanigans of a podcast. Um, hope you all enjoyed it. Uh, we're going to have it more tuned and worked out here uh, next week. And um, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully, uh, tell me down below if you guys liked the break in the middle. Um, if you would like to be featured as one of the breaks in the middle and whatnot, let me know or Cody know. Um, as you can see, we're find us on Twitter. Uh, you can go to the YouTube comments. You can go to the podcast area comments where I'm going to put this so you can download it. Uh, make sure you share it. And uh, we thank you very much for being here for our first podcast of Blake's Game Room. So, yeah, make sure, make sure you follow us on Twitter because in the future we're going to have this as a live podcast on Google Hangouts. So you guys will be able to come in, chat with us, um, shoot us questions and stuff like that while mm -hmm. we're actually recording podcast so we'll i don't know how blake will do it. he'll probably post on facebook and all that too but um i'm mainly a twitter guy i i try to avoid facebook if possible so i'll i'll be posting it on facebook you know probably an hour or two before we go live and uh you know hopefully yeah I, some I, I'll, I'll probably here. always uh post a day ahead of time that we're planning on doing a podcast so you know if you have any questions to go ahead and get them ready and, um, you know, when we go live, of course, we'll always update you. And, uh, yeah, so until next time, guys, we thank you with all of our gaming hearts and whatnot that you guys have watched this video. So uh, anything else, Cody, before we go? No, man. No, thanks for having me. All right, man. Definitely hope to see you on here a little more often, too. Sure, man. As always. All right, YouTube. Peace out.